All right, time for Fullest House, first edition, where we are playing Vettiheim. It is turn 25. I think this is going to be another relatively slow one. Yeah, not too much here. Uh, as we t as we try to digest uh, Bogarus, so we finish a decent amount of enchantment. Yeah, we're working up uh, to enchantment four, I think, for Twiceborn. Someone has claimed the Throne of Misfortune. Ah, uh, this is Marignon. Um, and yeah, you know, some people don't like to claim, I mean, Misfortune does hurt. Uh, but I think it gives you like four Astral Pearls a turn, this throne, which is pretty, yeah... That's hard to say no to. Uh, so, and you get the Dominion push and everything. It is actually going to be kind of bad news for us because we're going to get additional Dominion push uh, from Marignan. So, we may have to build another temple over in that area. Uh, and then most of our site searching uh, doesn't really work out. We do find a burial mound, so some a death gem, I think, one death gem a turn, which is nice. And we can now declare a new prophet uh, since our last one got ganked by a ghost. And then we catch a battle between Jabalba and Gath. So this must be, you know, Gath did mention they were busy with other things. This must be the other thing they are busy with. I think we have seen their blessed before, although not necessarily one of their armies. They have managed to get a hold of some Sa'ir. And they do have a little bit of mage support uh, with this army as well as blessed support. Uh, no gems, really. Let's see, what, is, what has this guy been up to? Yeah, just iron skinning himself. That's fair enough. Uh, looks like they're up against, yeah, a relatively small raiding force from Jabalba. I don't think these are Jabalbas. Oh, no, they are. They're sacreds. So, yeah, these guys, you know, they're not fantastic, like, half giants. I will say, right, they have full dark vision, and it looks like we're in a cave. So that is going to favor them fairly heavily. And I'm not sure, did these guys manage to get blessed? Now, it looks like most, if not all, of these sacreds are unblessed, so we're not going to get to see Jabalba's bless. And, like, ah, that's really sad. You know, to, to bring this amount of sacreds uh, and not even bless them. I mean, I guess maybe they went a scales build, but then it's like, why are you recruiting? I don't know. I don't know how to play Jabalba. Uh, but <laughs> unblessed sacreds always make me sad. I do think we've seen Gath's bless. And, whoops, that's still Jabalba. Right, yeah, the classic uh, blood bond regeneration, which, like, yeah, totally makes sense on giants. Uh, they get a lot of regen, and then blood bond helps spread the damage out, so you can regen it up, uh, yeah, more easily. You can see it in action there. That said, like, on these gibbers, uh, they're not as large as, you know, previous giants, so they don't have quite as big of an HP pool, so it's not as good. Um, but, you know, you can see, like, against these unblessed Jabalban sa Sacreds, like, it works out pretty well. I don't, they might have lost a little bit, um, but not much. So, that is not a great look uh, for Jabalba. Yeah, they lose everything. No, not quite everything, but most of their Sacreds. And they traded out for just a Hornblower and three Sa'ir. So, if I was Gath, I would be pretty happy with that trade. Not sure what happened to Jabalba. I'm thinking they're probably somewhat down to it since they aren't able to muster somebody to bless their sacreds or, you know, you never know. There could have been assassins, random events, so many reasons things can go wrong in Dominions. Speaking of things going wrong, uh, we have a battle in Vettiheim. I'm sure we'll win that. So we found the Dryad, uh, but this Dryad was not as happy with us, uh, and so we just get cursed. So I'm not sure, you know, why that's the case. Did we not bring a high enough level uh, nature mage? Is it just random chance? Who knows? Uh, but that one did not work out for us so well. Okay, so, oh, we're getting attacked by Vineman, it looks like. Ouch, we lose 3,400 population out of our capital. That is pretty painful, right? And we did take full misfortune, so stuff like this is what you have to worry for, watch out for. And, of course, we did pull out almost all of our cap-only mages who have the fortune teller ability, so it's all well and good to rely on fortune teller, but especially since, like, only our cap-only mages have that ability, it is going to be fairly challenging, right, to mobilize them for combat and then also spread them out, like, to all of our most important provinces to make sure that we don't get hit with events like this. So, yeah, anyway, anyone who tells you Misfortune 3 is free, uh, they are lying, or probably just mistaken. Uh, and then, yeah, we lose some Dominion somewhere. This is right on our border, so, and not our border with Marignan, so less worried about this one. Nice, we get some underwater units. This is actually pretty timely. This must be like Bogarus's scales kicking in for us, or at least uh, a lack of our own misfortune scales, because uh, this is right next to the lake, so, you know, we were planning on jumping in there soon, and these guys are amphibious. So there I was dissing uh, misfortune, but, you know, here's a counter argument. And speaking of counter arguments, we get nine air gems. Again, this is outside of our dominion, so we're not getting hit with our full uh, misfortune scales yet. And then let's see. Oh, yeah, and then of course, Throne of Misfortune is spreading. Another reason that, like, hey, well, we're Misfortune 3, so uh, bring it on. This is a free worldwide event for us. And then we do manage uh, to defeat the Vinemen, and 
the Woodhenge Druid that comes along with them. Like, yeah, our province defense isn't amazing, but Vinemen are pretty bad. And then this is the fort that we're, you know, not ready to crack yet. And then we do breach Bogarus. Excellent. So yeah, not too long of a siege. Uh, we do like that. And then, yeah, some patrolling. And we did manage to buy those birds, uh, who we can now send in as part of the storm. And I will catch you guys after the jump. All right, this is the situation and what we're doing about it. Uh, first things first, we are storming uh, just with the mercenaries here. So we'll see. Definitely a chance that they could fail. But if they do, you know, we only lose the mercenaries. That's not a big deal. Uh, and we are moving uh, some of our sacreds into position uh, onto Bogarus just in case it goes badly. Um, and we're leaving like some of our troops in position, although we are moving the majority of our siege strength off uh, onto this fort. So we'll hopefully be able to crack that pretty quickly, um, and we are going to leave behind some of our sacreds that you know will act as an assault force uh, once we do crack this fort. Otherwise, uh, we are stripping off some mages from the siege uh, to do you know research and build some infrastructure. We would like to get like a temple over here. Uh, probably could get away with <laughs> removing more mages, like probably should, but you know like I said, I I want this war to go nice and smooth, so we're we're going to waste a little research. Uh, our underwater forces are starting to move into position and of course like yeah we got this random event that gave us a bunch of meteorite guard uh, who can go underwater and are pretty good so like that is incredibly lucky and we will definitely be adding them uh, you know to our existing plan uh, to go underwater so I think this war uh, will be done pretty soon and is, is looking pretty good Definitely starting to think that, like, yeah, our northern neighbors here are going to be our next war target. Um, it will probably take us a few turns, especially to get our main army in position, because we want to go after this throne. Um, but in the meantime, we have started to recruit uh, some wolf brothers up here, like, along the border. And, you know, we'll be doing the same kind of thing, divvying them out and sending them out as, like, raiding groups. I haven't really decided, like, exactly what I want to hit and when. But yeah, it just doesn't look like Arco is very big. We know that they lost, you know, forces. Doesn't look like Pangea is that big. <laughs> Marignan is in a bit of a rough place right now, uh, but hopefully they're bringing up reinforcements and they'll be done with this war soon with, you know, relatively large army nearby uh, to assist. Though, frankly, I don't think we need any help. Um, but, you know, like, like I said, keeping somebody that is ostensibly your ally or at least a powerful neighbor like happy and busy <laughs> with other people is useful unto itself we can also see uh, how difficult it is to catch birds <laughs> this raiding party is much reduced uh, but still managing to bounce around and take provinces so ouch glad i do not have to deal with those birds um and i think we are yeah getting our first blood hunting going so you know a little on the late side but at least it is starting up I'm not planning on blood hunting super heavily, but we'll probably expand to at least have like two blood hunting operations of like three to four mages and kind of see where that takes us. And then, you know, especially as it moves more into the late game, we will probably expand into more blood hunting groups. Uh, but for the moment, I am enjoying all the money that we're getting in the late age. And speaking of, we have full mage recruitment. Uh, like I said, a lot of, well, not a lot of our troop recruitment, but some of our troop recruitment is going to the Wolf Brothers. And then otherwise, like, yeah, just a little bit, our Sacreds, we're maxing those out. Um, and then, you know, a few crossbowmen. Uh, in terms of the wider world, I don't think we have too much new information. Yeah, just continuing to move scouts around into Utgard. Uh, yeah, we're going to leave a scout here on this throne. There's a neutral province here in Midgard's territory, so we're going to move into that. Always a little interesting, like the later it is in the game, you know, what's going on with an independent province. Um, we can see that there's a Jevalban fort under siege here uh, by Erythia, Erythea, Eri the Ea, the Merfolk Nation. Anyway, um, we haven't really seen them in action yet, so it'll be interesting to see, you know, what they're bringing to bear. Uh, we don't really know how large they are, but they are, I believe they're forced to get a coastal start, um, or they might even, I think it's coastal. Yeah, because late age is a little weird. It's Relay is the only one that gets an underwater start. Uh, but these guys are definitely an amphibious nation, right? They have a lot of underwater stuff, so they probably, I'm imagining, right, started somewhere around here. Uh, so they have pushed, like, a decent ways inland. So, like, depending on how far around this lake they extend, they may also be relatively large and, like, somebody to keep an eye on. But, yeah, I think that covers turn 25. 
All right, this is Fullest House, first edition, where we are playing Vettiheim. It is turn 26. Another mystery turn for me. Oh, yeah, we're sending the mercs in. All right, let's take a look uh, to see if we're going to be able to get this capital real cheaply. Um, and, like, yeah, there's a little bit of stuff in here, just some archers. Looks like some blood summoning, yeah, a bunch of mages. I did tell these guys, okay, yeah, there goes the birds. Um, and, like, yeah, just some dudes in robes. And they didn't get too much time uh, to buff themselves up, like a little bit of twist fate, uh, which is probably why a lot of them survived that initial strike. But, you know, that only protects against one hit. Um, and they just, yeah, they don't have the damage output. There isn't enough chaff here. This is the situation that I was hoping for. Uh, so yeah, we did set these guys also to attack rear, perhaps a mistake. Um, it did cross my mind, it's like, well, maybe we want somebody to go for the wall archers, uh, but I wasn't really sure exactly how much stuff would be back there, and like, the birds are not fantastic, like, yeah, the birds routed, so... You know, there was a decent chance that the birds were going to need some help. Uh, this is the commander. I was like, yeah, I could have sworn the birds routed. Uh, so the bird squad routed. Uh, but still, that was a good result for us. We risked and lost basically nothing, uh, just the mercenaries who we don't get to keep anyway. Uh, so let's take a look. Yeah, so we lose pretty much all the birds. Uh, it's kind of nice that we hang on to the Bandar because you know, it'll be nice uh, to use their siege strength uh, to crack the next fort. Speaking of the next fort, uh, we get attacked in a location, which I imagine... Oh, interesting. Okay, <laughs> some scouts. I wonder, do they have any gear or anything? No, just some scouts. I do think we have 6 PD here. Yeah, we do. In fact, we have a little bit more, uh, so... You do always want at least a little bit of province defense on top of your forts, I think. Uh, as far as the rest of the turn is concerned, finish some research and enchantment, which is nice. Uh, Serpent Lord, that sounds like probably Pythium has claimed a throne, uh, so that is nice for them. And then we miss with a site search. Uh, we also find Maggot Woods. I am not familiar with that one. Sounds interesting. Probably, you know, another mage we can recruit. So we'll have to take a look at that and see if it's just gems. Uh, and we get our first uh, blood hunting going. Uh, this is not a good result, uh, but we will improve this. We're just getting our patrollers rolling. Uh, and we don't actually have any of those items yet that are going to assist our blood hunters. So we expect this to improve a lot in the coming turns. We have an unexpected event. I'm sure nothing bad. Uh, let's see, somebody was wounded. <laughs> yeah, some unit was diseased. Like, eh, it's fine. It's just part of life uh, in misfortune. And then there's a worldwide event. <laughs> Speaking of misfortune, of course, we are safe from this. Well, perhaps safe is the wrong way to look at it, but we're in no more danger than normal. Uh, and then it looks like our native siege strength is enough to crack this other fort, which is good uh, because I forgot to rebid on the Bandar Band. And Pangea does need some siege strength, uh, so they grab that mercenary group instead of us. And I will catch you guys after the jump. All right, this is the situation and what we're doing about it. Uh, first of all, we should talk the war. It is almost over. It's gone pretty well. Uh, we will hopefully be closing it out. Um, not this coming turn. We probably could because uh, we have most of our forces in place uh, to jump into this lake. But I am a little concerned about a province defense dump. And, I mean, you know, we, we did get lucky, <laughs> right? The game provided us uh, with some underwater chaff, uh, some pretty good chaff as well. Uh, but, of course, you know, it's very unlikely we're going to get that again. So I'd rather hit with everything, um, and I figured eh, it's probably not the end of the world, or it's probably a good idea to also have a Shambler skin armor, which, you know, allows uh, landbound commanders uh, to go under the water, but also underwater commanders to come up onto the land. And we will probably eventually, hopefully, use this lake uh, to make bishop fish, uh, which is one of the few, like, summonable holy threes, and they can be really useful for claiming multiple thrones at the same time. And honestly, not the worst thing for us to have anyway, since we don't have great priests and we are struggling a little bit to control our dominion. Uh, but we are assaulting this fort next turn. Uh, we're just going to use like a small assault force, so we'll see how this goes, right? 13 Rimvedi and Body Ethereal and Quickness. I have pretty high hopes. It's done well for us in the past. We've also got like a little bit of swarm casting. You know, we have a bunch of guys hanging out on top of the fort if it all goes wrong. So, you know, we'll, we'll have another chance uh, to redeem ourselves. 
Uh, and then the nice thing about not finishing out the war, I mean, we do want uh, Bogarus's dominion uh, out of here. Not that it's particularly bad. Uh, we would just like to get our cold scales. Actually, no, they have some cold scales in. Yeah, so we don't particularly need our dominion in here, uh, but it's always good to get it in. And that moment when a player is eliminated, all their candles disappear. So like that's the moment to try to make hay in terms of pushing your dominion into that area. And to that end, we are building a temple uh, in both of these forts that we've taken, and we're also uh, redeclaring a prophet down here who will also help, you know, push it, push our dominion. And once we have all that in place, uh, then we'll move into the lake and, you know, hopefully finish out this first war. Uh, from there, uh, we do need to take this throne, right? So uh, we'll probably, you know, nothing too special. We're just going to gather up our army and probably waste a few nature gems summoning some bugs just so that we don't you know lose too many units but i think we should just be able to roll over this throne without too much difficulty famous last words uh but once we finish that then it is I, I do feel like this is probably our next avenue of attack um it also puts us in contact in better contact with raga um it's looking like arco is is pretty small and weak um, and we know they lost a fairly substantial army right on top of abyssia's capital speaking of which abyssia is cracked so we should get to see a storm there next turn i imagine that arco you know has some other forces that will probably be coming down so there's no need to jump into this right away, uh, but, you know, like I said, also Pangea is kind of an attractive target since they're not that large either, uh, and I you know, haven't really been able to communicate with this player. And then also, you know, Marignan <laughs> this is, hasn't been cracked now, uh, but, you know, has moved a, a large force back on top, and now the aristocrat, his pretender, is here. So there should be no loss uh, of command staff this time during an assault. And, you know, once this is finished, you know, it's got like a giant army kind of in position already to move against Pangea. So haven't discussed it with them yet, but uh, like I said, I, I do think it'll be a convenient war for them and something they'll be open to. Otherwise, in terms of our scouting, like, yeah, just <laughs> the fort and the cap circle, <laughs> ridiculous. Uh, but, we're, you know, we're moving our scouts deeper into Raga's territory to try to get a, an idea of how far they extend. Haven't really talked to Utgard. Uh, probably should do that before I launch the Northern War. I, I'm, I don't know, I'm hesitant, right? Because <laughs> we can't really elf anyone or goblin anyone that uh, we sign a non-aggression pact with. At least not uh, with an element of surprise. So there's definitely some pressure to like not sign treaties with people. It's not really, you know, my default is to treaty up usually with most of my neighbors, except for like one or two targets. Um, we already have right like two non-aggression packs uh, that so our borders are like somewhat covered. So yeah, I don't know. I'm kind of back and forth. I might just talk to them and see like how they feel about Raga, right? Because it's likely that they share a pretty large border and are fairly worried about them. So you know, I might couch it as like, hey, you know, gotta fight a quick war here, but then should be able to jump in and help you. Uh, maybe talk with Gath as well. Um, you know, and like I I've talked about possibly coalitioning Raga before. Um, and now we actually kind of have a reason that it would be useful for us, because uh, if, if Utgard is looking to the south, then they're not looking north to us. Uh, but that's all still very speculative. We're going to leave a scout on top of their capital. We can see, you know, they're recruiting plenty of giants. That makes sense. They're a giant nation. Um, this was interesting. So Midgard, uh, their cap circle, they got, this is some bad luck. This I feel you can definitely complain about. Uh, so, you know, they have a Lamia Queen and then 150 just various, like, foul spawn type units. A lot of these actually, like, aren't too bad. A lot of them, like, look uh, worse than they are, but some of these have, like, poison clouds and a few probably have, like, death gazes and stuff. So it, it would definitely be kind of nasty to clear out. Uh, this, this is not even a throne, right? <laughs> this is just, you know, Dominion saying like, hey, this game, how about a little bit of middle finger for you? So we're going to jump on top of their capital, uh, you know, and see, see what's going on there. We see Atlantis down here, though we don't really have any idea of their size. I know that Marignan had said at one point that it looked like Relay was probably going to go after Atlantis. So, you know, possibly that's going on. Don't really know if, you know, anyone's getting the better of it there. Uh, no troop recruitment for us, really, except for our sacreds this turn, because all the infrastructure we're getting. Uh, and then probably the final point is this Jabalbin fort has been cracked, uh, so we should get to see a storm here next turn. Oh, and kind of irrelevant, but, uh, you know, I was looking at I'm like, man, how did, so, like, whose dominion is this? Why, why are there four candles here? Uh, and <laughs> I had to look it up. This is actually Joman's dominion, and I have absolutely no idea, like, how it got here. 
uh, because I, I don't even think we've seen their flag anywhere. So, you know, who knows? <laughs> Just one of the mysteries of Dominions. Uh, and I think that covers turn 26.